All right, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, this presentation is going to be on understanding the full data path for Wi Fi engineers. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Avance. I'm a senior instructor. I was doing the WI design course here this week, and uh, I teach for a living. I teach about 40 weeks a year. I go all over the world. Love what I do. But uh, this, uh, this particular presentation is about understanding the full data path, right? So understanding RF and Wi-Fi is key, but understanding the full data path is completely now required. New technology is always coming and changing, and uh, bottom line, it's not enough to point fingers anymore, right? So you get them pointing back at you, right? All right, so Cisco has this thing called Enterprise Campus Three-Layer Design Model. How many of you are familiar with this? Core distribution access. It's where most of us wireless engineers live, right? So down here at the access layer, um, but it's a good idea to understand some of these other layers as well because they all impact the data path. They all impact the end user experience, which is what we're designing for, right? So APs aggregate to the switch, access aggregates to distribution, distribution aggregates to core. Seems like we're all comfortable with this. Surveys are, of course, great, and they're required, okay? Uh, one way or another, you got to do surveys, and everybody knows that. People have different approaches. We spend time learning. Uh, for example, see the presentation I did yesterday on experience. Uh, we talked about that, talked about getting in the practice, right? Practice makes perfect. Find what works with surveys, but be open to new ideas. So let me ask another question. Would you guys feel comfortable doing a survey on a project, whether it's greenfield, brownfield, walking in and knowing nothing else about the architecture? Is understanding just the RF alone, is that good enough? No, not at all, right? So for example, if you're designing for location, if we put the APs in the correct locations, is that all there is to do with that? We know location services requires a correct RF design. AP's got to be put in the correct place. And then the fun begins, right? You got to import the maps into Prime, CMX. And that's not really a small or easy job to do that. Calibrate. And then uh, vendors also have specific latency, sizing requirements, uh, depending on the type of location, the amount of traffic, the amount of traffic between your controllers. All those kind of things come into the picture, right? So a little bit larger picture. You've got several new different type of controller deployments, controller designs, right? And uh, for example, again, Cisco. I've done a lot with Cisco. so. I'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, Cisco has one architecture called Unified Access. There's five different deployment models under the one architecture, right? So you could be deploying APs for centralized, flex connect, autonomous, uh, lightweight, centralized, converged cloud. But what about your IDFs and MDFs? Where's your cabling going to? Are you sure that cabling supports that particular environment with the distance, the correct category of cabling? And then what about the uplinks between the switches? Between access, distribution, and core, right? What also about the data center layers? Uh, WAN availability. If you go and put in new Flex Connect APs, is that going to oversubscribe the WAN? What if you're not doing Flex? What does that do to your WAN, right? These are all different thought processes that come other than just star of design, right? And what about all these other network protocols that are in play now, right? And then the scary new concept of SDN. How many of you guys have actually done an SDN deployment? A couple of you for Wi-Fi? Is that part of it? Or just for the wired network? Yeah. So, you know, the truth is, is that every network designer's goal is good quality of experience, right? And there's a lot of variables that affect that. So I was talking about IDF and MDF locations. You know, some images are worth a thousand words. Some images are worth no words at all, right? So uh, our APs, as said, within 100 meters of the closets, do you have the access port real estate? Uh, do we have required PoE? There's a lot of variables there, right? How many different flavors of PoE are there? You guys know? Five. There's standards and then there's vendor proprietary versions as well, right? So lots of different things there. And then not every switch has PoE on every interface, 
Some switches, you may get a 24 port switch and only eight ports have the PoE, right? And then it becomes also what type of power modules are you using in the switch? All those things come into play. Uh, what about adding uh, additional APs? Is that gonna strain already strained uplinks? How many of you actually do like some type of uh, NetFlow collection or SNMP collection of uplinks whenever you do wireless deployments? That's good, that's good. Um, check cabling. Use AirTrack G2, something like that, to make sure the cabling's good. Sound? Yeah. Good deal. Those are all important things, right? It's just kind of an overview that, you know, sometimes at scale, it seems like we deal with uh, the RF only, and we place the APs, and we may work with some switches, and we may make sure our controllers have HA in the data center, right? Uh, but there's a whole lot of different ways traffic flows throughout this network. Many, many, many protocols that are also in use in these networks as well, right? So do you need to understand them all? Do you have to understand them all? Well, you don't have to necessarily understand them all. You don't have to necessarily program them all, but you do, under need, to, you do need to understand the full traffic path, right? From where the user connects and gets their access throughout the entire network. So how many of you are familiar with the service block concept and service block design? Similar to that three layer design, right? With service blocks, of course, you got different skill sets for each of these, right? Um, if you're doing wireless all the time, you're probably not gonna be a master at like Nexus 7Ks, those are data center switches, right? Probably not gonna be a master maybe at firewalls, maybe you are, maybe you're not, but you still have to understand where that traffic path is flowing through the network because bottom line, as we said, people point fingers and the very first finger they point is that where they're connected for access, right? The wireless. So centrally switched APs are the split MAC design. All of us are really familiar with this. Controllers at the head end. AP managed by the controller. Security at the central site. Simple redundancy techniques, not much to it, right? And then like we said, Flex Connect. You have a lot of different options here with Flex Connect. Could be centrally managed, could be centrally switched, could be locally switched. That happens on a per WLAN basis, right? So. How many of you guys have done the Flex Connect style of deployments? Whether it's Cisco or not, yeah? How many of you called in to troubleshoot Flex Connect deployments? Yep. Yeah, lots there. Every AP's gotta be aware of the VLANs and the, the WLANs are terminating, right? So there's a whole lot more to it than just placing the APs and getting the RF right. Now we've got these new cloud and hybrid uh, deployments, right? So cloud and hybrid, like for example, we know Meraki's there, but there's several vendors out that are doing cloud now. Um, but a lot more enterprises are also doing hybrid integrations where they're using ICE for everything, that one policy vision that Cisco has, and they're also doing it for their branch offices through the cloud, right? Integrating it with the Meraki platform. Anybody been involved with this type of deployment yet? A couple people? Yeah, so again, it's not just, uh, not just our uh, full data path. So where I'm kind of headed with this is, you know, what, a, what about all the protocols that are involved? We've talked about Wi-Fi, we've talked about RF, we know our data rates, right? We've mastered that part. Probably all familiar with CapWAP and what that does. We also have mobility messaging, Ethernet over IP or CapWAP, depending on the code we're using, right? Depending on if it's converged or AeroS based depending on which vendor you're using. And then what about the security protocols? Most of us master those as well because it plays along with wireless. So that could be .1x, Radius E, you know, Web Auth, all of our ACLs, things like that. And then what about uh, the application requirements themselves? That's a big variable. I don't even have to ask for hands to be raised. How many of you have configured VLANs, trunks, spanning tree, all that kind of fun stuff? So those few protocols, yeah. Yeah, we think about those, right? But also what about like HSRP, Ether Channel, LACP, FHR, QoS, AVC? It's a lot, right? A lot to master. This is just a few of the layer two protocols that are out there. So whenever people say, oh, I'm good with layer two, I'm like, hmm, you're good with all this? Yeah, you may be, but there's a lot. 
and it's repetitive. We've got to do the same thing over and over again, right? So all the sites, we need segmentation. We need the switches to work without creating loops, right? We need redundancy. We need first hop redundancy. We need all that kind of stuff to play in that plays a role. Um, and that's really where this new SDN thing is coming in, right? So uh, we're it's actually going to do a live presentation on SDN today, but was having some issues with that. But uh, this is where you know kind of we're headed. This is what's next. Because all those repetitive things we were just talking about, all those 60 protocols at layer two, that wasn't even layer three. That's just access layer protocols, right? So layer three is a whole other animal in itself as well. But bottom line, if you haven't heard about this SDN, how does it change your RF designs? How does it change your AP designs? Anybody know? RF a dozen. No matter what type of architecture or magic the vendors are using, nothing's going to fix bad RF, right? So that's still there. That's good news for all of us, right? So this doesn't fix poor RF designs. Uh, but as far as the wired side, several things are changing, right? The switches from access distribution and core are now going to be running all the same code, and they're going to be managed centrally. One central application to push down all the application requirements across the enterprise. And that's including to the controllers, right? So as an administrator, you would just identify which applications are important, and it will take care of all those protocols we listed out and then some as well as your layer through protocols, your high availability protocols, you name it, right? So only the allowed and selected applications receive the priority and receive that functionality, but those, those mundane tasks we've been doing, like creating VLANs and trunks and, and ether channel and just all that type of stuff and spanning tree and everything else we've been mentioning, soon will be all going away. Now, is this tomorrow? For most organizations, no. We got a ways to go for this, right? But this is definitely where it's headed. But it will not go well just be What's that? It will not go away. It will just be hidden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those things aren't going away. It's just going to be hidden things that we don't necessarily have to do. But it also opens up a whole new bunch of possibilities for people, right? How many of you have taken any type of programming class before? Enjoy it? Uh, somewhat, a little bit. Not all programming is the same, right? Uh, how many of you have tried Python? OK, so Python, I love Python. It can definitely make things simpler, you know. Um, but it is next, and it gives you new forms of integration. And there's new consulting opportunities in this area as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the demo of the APIC and everything here. Uh, wasn't able to connect to it. But uh, if you guys want to see that, definitely ping me, and I'll be happy to pull that up. So you know the takeaway for this without the demo is keep in mind the full data path and all that's going on, especially if you have to support Wi-Fi. Uh, no technology can fix poor RF uh, and Wi-Fi designs. Site surveys are, of course, still just as critical as ever. Several deployment architectures now, you need to learn them, right? Not everything's centralized anymore. If you don't understand the, uh, the architectures, the protocols, where they begin and end, see the experience presentation I did yesterday. Right. Of course, networks are evolving. The new opportunities in SDN I just kind of mentioned. Most companies are still years away from refreshing this or at least adopting a full SDN solution. Uh, and if you haven't programmed and you want to know where to get started, there's now more places than ever. Like uh, Microsoft has this Learn to Code uh, platform. It's free. You just sign up and you can pick a few classes to take it. Uh, there's several of those resource centers out there. And if you're brand new, recommend Python for beginners because that kind of plays into the SDN uh, experience and architecture. So that's what I got.